Hello comic book fans, here is Earl Grey and this is the Sandman Overture Absolute Edition drawn by J.H. Williams III and written of course by the old chap Neil Gaiman in this slipcase here alone is a work of art um, as I've discussed in my last video you can think of these Absolute Editions as maybe a bit over the top um, I don't think so, because even so we have this artificial leather thing here going on, which wouldn't work with every book, I think, and we have um, different uh, letterings, different fonts, and, and so on. It fits the title. Um, and we get a first glimpse into the beauty of J.H. Williams' art. Just simply fantastic. Um, beautiful is maybe the word that uh, will appear a lot in this video. Um, yeah. We have an introduction here, and they take the time until it come, uh, we get to issue one, the cover for issue one. And the story actually is uh, consists, as you probably know, only of six issues. So this is just the actual story. I will get a lot of bonus here, and um, yeah, I think some critique is in place here uh, that this book is re really a giant money grab. But to be honest with you. You can grab my money every every time uh, when you give me this uh, this kind of book here, and uh, the bonus section is, in my mind, pretty glorious. Uh, but uh, I'll talk about it later. So, yeah, this is a Dave McKean uh, cover art. The six part mini series is a prequel to the old familiar Sandman and it should be familiar to you when you read this book here because even though it's a prequel it takes for granted that you know about the endless and the personnel in the story here. Um, here is the uh, thinking flower on a um, distant planet in this flower dreams and this is a familiar trope that everyone who dreams about dream sees dream in a shape that he can handle that uh, is a bit similar to, her, to her, himself itself herself and here we have uh, the flower version of dream but something is going wrong because this dream um, starts to burn. I don't want to tell you the story here, but this is uh, the, just the beginning and um, just the first pages. His double page spreads are amazing, of course, and um, here we have the mouth of the Corinthian as the model for the panel layout here and that's the Corinthian you know he has mouths instead of eyes another great panel uh, or double page spread here with destiny looking into the future with himself in the future he can't really read about his own future as he discusses here with uh, death dreams uh, and his sister um, when he reads about the future, he's already in it. And that's form and the, the medium and the story falls together here. Uh, if this makes sense in English, I don't know, but it's great. And he switches uh, styles, the art styles here, and uses color 
for the sake of the story or the absence of the color for the sake of the story. And even though it's all clearly uh, William style here, um, it's throughout this book here, there are so many different art styles and tricks he uses, um, but not to show off. Maybe he likes to show off as well, but for the sake of the story. So, and here we have a double, or oh no, a, a quadruple um, spread with all the different incarnations of the Sandman of the Dream because he's summoned. Um, yeah, there's some problem going on and we see here all the different incarnations of the dream and there are plenty more. This is the dream of the beginning of the Sandman, as you all know. He has an even giant Sandman. It's not only beautiful, but it uh, shows us the the cosmic scope of the story here. And this is something I like about this here. It gives us a broader scenery, a really cosmic um, level for the Sandman. And this cosmic approach is um, clearly made visible with uh, William's art. The cover for Sandman 2 here. Since I've seen it somewhere on uh, the floppy, I earn to get this in some format, uh, in some way or another. And now I have this in oversize in this beautiful book and I'm happy, really. It's all drawn and colored by Williams uh, himself. Um, even though uh, the colorist in this book is here, of course, Dave Stewart, the best of the best here. It's just no middle ground, just the stars at work here. And you can consider Dave McKean in his very own way a star by himself. And yeah, we have this fantastic panel stuff, panel shape stuff here on. Yeah, he's meeting Mad Hattie. And yeah, about the personality of a dream, that much can I say. Um, when I read the, the six issues the first time, I thought, okay, the reveal in the end was maybe a bit... Um, yeah, an add-on. Maybe uh, Neil Gaiman hasn't thought about it when I when he wrote the story, and uh, he thought afterwards uh, it would be a cool a cool if the, uh, this dream mm, could have been this or that. But when I read it the second time, it all made sense. He really laid clues here and there, and. Uh, yeah, that's just one, one thing of many, many things. And here we have all, again, the different incarnations of the Sandman in a discussion. Look at that. It's not only complex, beautiful, it's very interesting, makes use of the different uh, lettering styles, uh, the possibilities of the medium come into play here. And it's, we have even the first dream before there was nothing, uh, before there was space or something like that. And he's really an abstract <laughs> Jude or a Judette or Judette. Um, wonder, wonder, wonderful. Um, so. And we will meet Dream's mother and later on his father. Uh, the art style, by the way, is 
took inspiration from um, Art Deco artist, I guess, called Peter Max, who I haven't heard of before, but I will uh, Google for him later on. Um, yeah, and we will meet Hope. Uh, this, there's something more to this cat than you can think of at the moment. Uh, um, but yeah, we will meet Hope and uh, it's a little girl and uh, suddenly the whole thing with uh, Sandman in hell and you know, there's battle with uh, some demon. This, this whole thing uh, gets a new meaning uh, with this story, which is great. And here we have the panel layout in shape of one hand, the three ladies. Uh, will be um, get another appearance and so on and so on it's a great great story it's a great book it's 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 a necessary addition i think uh, for every sandman fan because of all the beauty here that drips literally out of this book here but how they have managed to blow up a six mini, mini issue series to a thick tome of this proportions or it's a bit thinner than the other Sandman absolutes but anyway you get what I'm saying. First and foremost they put all the six issues in a so-called artist's edition a version into the back which is uh, J.H. Williams art before Dave Stewart's coloring. Um, you can see that uh, this is much more than just the inks and on some pages we have um, J.H. Wilman's coloring as well because uh, he really had his own um, agenda uh, how to color some, uh, some stuff here so he did some coloring, reference coloring, I would say. Um, so Dave Stewart had a starting point, a reference point. And this here is um, Dave Stewart, um, Williams as well, or you can see it with this cover page here. Actually, I have some issues to call this really an artist edition because for an artist edition I think it should be the same format as uh, the original art and this is not the case I think with J.H. Uh, Williams art that has to be much bigger if you look at uh, this photo here oh come on focus you can see um, the cover painting, I don't want to say drawing, uh, for what issue five or so, on the easel in um, Williams' studio. And this is much, much bigger than this book here. So I figure every page, each page here, has to be bigger than uh, the format in this book. But yeah. <laughs> May, uh, but then uh, this book here would be absolutely not affordable, too expensive. So it's fantastic never, nevertheless to see all the stuff here in black and white. But it's not with uh, some other comics where I always say, oh, black and white is a bit superior to the colored version. Here really Dave Stewart's coloring is the cream on the cake, uh, on the icing, on many pages. Um, and oh, But this double page here uh, was colored for the most part uh, by Dave Stewart himself. Yeah, Not by Dave Stewart himself, but by Williams himself, as you can see here. These, these parts here above not, but the rest. So uh, Williams really is an artist who has great sensibilities for color. He knows how 
to use color for the story and yeah so um the artist edition part i really like it and here you can see another part that was colored by williams himself and dave stewart didn't have to do too much stuff in the end um i want to sh I wanted to show you was, um, oh, yeah, yeah, you can see William's coloring and the skills he's showing here, this double page. Maybe even Dave Stewart learned something or two about coloring. Uh, when working together with Williams. This is just amazing. This is the cover for issue 6 and this is the so-called artist edition version with J. H. Williams coloring. And it's so colorful. Come on, focus. Yeah. It's so colorful and beautiful that you really can ask yourself what the heck can Dave Stewart add to this beauty? And quite frankly, not so important stuff, but he did something never nevertheless. Of course, um, he, uh, we have the words and, and some geometrical forms in here, but here's some universe stuff and he amped Sometimes the color is a bit, the contrast is uh, increased here and stuff like that. So, you long, yeah, the longer you look, the longer you look, the more you can see the difference between these two versions. Yeah, but. Yeah. Very interesting. What else can I show you? There's the script for Overture 1 by Neil Gaiman. Um, which I've read and this is really interesting because uh, Gaiman really goes into details uh, with issue 1. I guess in the further run of the story he wrote less and less. But that's not so uncommon, I think, when great minds work together. And still, I think it's <clears throat> a bit unfair that Neil Gaiman takes the first place um, here on the cover because uh, he, Williams had all the work and, and really um, it's his, his success that this book's, book is so wonderful. But of course, without Neil Gaiman's inventions and fantasy and, and his amazing world that he created, um, yeah, everything would be nothing. But it takes some artist like J. H. Williams to flesh it out to make it come into being. So, um, what else we have here? Here are some annotations by Dave Stewart, how he colored the stuff um, and took the references from Williams to do his own thing. And we have even a longer text from Todd Klein, the letterer. As you can see in this book here is really everything they could find that was or is Sandman related, Overture related, but I'm really fine with it. I'm glad. And uh, here's some stuff how Dave McKean got his covers done. And some interview section with Gaiman and 
Williams, notes, bonus drawings. And we come to an end, my friends. I hope I have convinced you that this book isn't a money grab at all. Um, or <laughs> maybe a money grab, but it's worth your money if this isn't... Uh, maybe this is a paradox, but the whole book here is a paradox and... Contradictions are a sign of wisdom as some man who was more intelligent than me said so thanks for listening and watching goodbye